Hungry Rex? <laughs> Welcome to Robot Factory. As you will remember from 37 minutes worth of part 12 and me trying to kit bash code together to get our mp3 player to work along with the existing code, I failed mightily. Send command was not declared in this scope. Void send command. Sure looks like I declare it, don't I? As you can see, this is the joy of a guy who doesn't write computer code trying to figure out what to do here. So looking at the wiring for a second, we have the MP3 module, which is wired just with its basic setup, TX, RX, VCC, and ground, shared by the Arduino Mega. The way I changed things to work hardware-wise is that now our GTEC voice recognition module is running off of um, serial bus 1 on the Mega, and our MP3 module is running off serial bus 2. So now, with these two different serial inputs running, we can go ahead and run both devices. They'll communicate through the software without any problems, allowing Rex to both listen and speak. And by using serial 1 and serial 2, uh, we leave the serial ports, uh, the pin 0 and 1, the serial bus that's shared with our programming port open so that we can leave everything wired in and reprogram on the fly if we need to. Okay, so you can see I've labeled this as working code, voice recognition and speech as of December 14th when the code launched just fine. So what I did here is I have included the variable speed servo library that we're using, declared my jaw, declared my eyes, declared my servo objects. You'll notice that initially I had been declaring my next servo pins in their own lines of code. I commented those out because what I figured would be the case, and it turned out to be true, is that I only need to do the attach command down here in my void setup. You will see that I attach my next, next servos. I don't need to declare them as servo pins up here. So all I'm going to do actually is delete these two lines of code. They're small, they probably don't matter, but the thing that I like about it is going through and getting each better step working properly. Cleaning up the code as I go, removing things that I don't need. So, now, this line right here, I have to be honest, I'm not sure exactly what this line of code does as far as the way it interfaces with the buffer on the Catalyx board. I need to figure that out. However, here, in these define options, I went through, copied them exactly over from the sample working code and what these do is give us human readable commands that then have send a hex value when they're called. Now the, you'll note if you remember, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, if you remember one of the big problems we have was getting an error on this send command function not having been declared and what I figured out was the problem it was a very simple problem, but it was really just accounting for braces as I go through. And that after my brace that closes out, let's see where that one highlighted out, that closes out my void loop, the problem that I had was that I was including the void send command function within the void loop rather than declaring it outside of the void loop. A pretty simple error, a pretty simple problem with just having braces in the wrong spots. Took me a little while to, to debug and figure out what the problem was. Got it sorted out. So now what I've done thus far is if we hop back up to void setup, all the rest of this code is the same that it's been up to this point. 
Uh, let's see. But what we get to is initially on line 27 in void setup, I begin serial one. And the serial one port is where I have my voice recognition module attached. And initially, I'm only beginning that one because I don't need the program to be listening to multiple things until it's gone through and done this initial setup of the GTEC board, sending it the hex commands that give it its orders. Now, in thinking about this, I probably, rather than doing definitions above for these various commands, could there we are, could insert them as serial writes the way I have here, or conversely, and this may be more likely what I do in my next iteration, is to go through and declare and define options that send these hex commands in a user-readable way, the way they do for the Catalix board. I don't know yet. I'm going to figure with play with that. But then we're able to go ahead and send the command because here on line 53, we begin serial two. We start the MP3 module listening to our program and our program listening to the MP3 module. We give a 500 millisecond delay for the board to begin actually initializing. We send it the command to select the card that is installed. We can give it a little bit of a delay to make sure that that has loaded and we are off to the races. So now, while serial one is available, and our com is reading on serial one, now all of these switch cases that we had written previously for the GTEC module work just fine. And we are able to go ahead and insert the send commands to play various files. Now, right now, you've seen I've just installed and gotten working voice feedback, roaring, we shall call it, on two of the commands, the or two of the cases, the Hey Rex and Hungry Rex cases, and can go ahead and do more. What you'll notice, the one thing that I had happen here that I wasn't really thrilled with is that because of the amount of time that it takes for this second roar to occur, I need to figure out what the delay is between sending this command, that file completely playing, and then writing Rex back to her resting state of eyes off and jaw light off. Um, that's going to take a little bit of tinkering. I'm sure it's just a matter of timing the length of the clip and looking at that and then figuring out how long I need this delay to be. It may only need another second or two. Nothing too crazy. Um, and then the rest of the code works just the same. Um, yeah. So I think we're in a good place. Uh, this is actually having Rex listening to us and responding to us audibly is where I wanted to be by the beginning of January. So I'm two weeks ahead of my curve on where I wanted things working. Um, you'll see this the week of Christmas. So you, this video should go live uh, two days before Christmas, it should go live on the 23rd, I believe, of December, and you'll see it just before Christmas. Um, so by the time we get to the next Rex video, we're going to really be talking about what our options are for now, starting to move forward with getting Rex walking. So as you've noticed, I've gone to an every other week format on the videos. Uh, every other week, there is a Rex video in the off weeks that I don't have a Rex video. Right now, I'm working on building a series of LEGO Mindstorms videos that go through basic setup, basic running of LEGO Mindstorms, because it's a great tool for getting folks into robotics. I had never played with them before. I was asked to help out and volunteer with a group of 4-H kids doing a, a robot competition, and it's the first time I've laid my hands on the software and on the Mindstorm stuff itself, and it's really fun, it's really cool, it's a great intro to all of these concepts, especially the programming concepts, because even though you're not writing your own code in the Mindstorms, it is giving you a real sense of how computer code works, how it has to go bit by bit 
in these simple software environments to execute things and to think about flow control and stuff like that. So I hope you'll check those out as well. Um, it's not all robot dinosaurs, it's also Mindstorm's robots. And I'm going to continue to throw in occasional how-to videos when questions come up, like I did with how do you convert a USB cable to power a solderless breadboard. So, thanks for stopping by. Please like, share, subscribe. If you want to make sure that you receive every video in your inbox, when you subscribe, go ahead and click on the little bell next to the subscribe button and it will send you a notification. Look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.